I know what you're thinking. No, this was not a conflict fought in tight trousers. Today, we're talking about the Battle of the Bulge. And this was the final thrust of the Germans to slow the advance of the Allies in the West, a last attempt to save themselves as the walls closed in on them. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Will, I'm here with Sam, and we're talking about one of our battle breakdowns today. Um, before you ask Sam, it's a bottle of bud. I've got too much of it. I, I think it's just, we'll acknowledge it and move on, right Sam? Let's talk about you. I, I'm, I'm actually on a lager as well. Um, again, this is uh, Korev for, um, from the St. Austell Brewery. Um, I've mentioned it on the channel once before, if you've seen that. Um, it's nice. It's really nice. It's quite a beery lager. I'm a big fan. Again, it's, it's that wonderful tagline, isn't it? A beer that tastes like beer. Absolutely. <laughs> they should put that so, on the bottle. <laughs> well, like, it's going to sell, isn't it? Uh, but before we start our battle breakdown, guys, um, if you've seen any of our videos before, um, then we we love for you to hit that subscribe button at the bottom there if you haven't already. Um, if not, like, subscribe, and if you've got anything that you'd like us to talk about, please leave a comment down below. But in the Ardennes Forest, near the town of Bastogne, the Americans were sat freezing in the winter snow. In fact, it was that they had about fifteen thousand casualties due to cold injuries alone. The sound of tanks suddenly rumbles into earshot. Artillery fire rains down. The Germans were attacking. It started on the 16th of December 1944 and lasted until the 25th of January. I'm talking about the Battle of the Bulge. Let's start our battle breakdown. Yeah, let's break down this bulging thrust. Oh, stop it, Sam. Are you flirting with me? I suppose we should answer the uh, answer the big question first, the one you're all thinking about, because we know you're all thinking about bulges. Um, oh. Why call it a bulge? Um, so as the Germans pushed into the Ardennes, uh, the Allied lines were, were said to resemble a bulge. Effectively, it was called the Battle of the Bulge based on the sort of the, the line it left on the map. Um, the battle was sometimes also known as the Battle of the Ardennes. Um, but that's nowhere near as interesting, and God knows, nowhere near as funny. On the Allied side, the battle involved the 12th, the 6th, and the 21st Army Group, and the 1st Airborne Army. This was mostly American soldiers, with a smattering of British units here and there. On, on the German side, you had the 5th and 6th Panzer Armies, and then the 7th Army. These, these are heavily armoured tank-focused armies designed to push hard and fast, like those bulges. Yeah, and you need to push hard and fast to make that bulge, don't you? So Hitler thought that the armies and their leaders uh, to the west were sort of more likely to sue for peace than they were for their eastern counterparts, that being the, the Russians. Um, he thought the Russians were also militarily superior, which at the time was eh, questionable. Um, his plan was to drive a wedge between the Allies, splitting them, capturing the supplies, particularly fuel. The Germans, towards the end of the war, really didn't have the, the oil supplies they needed. They, their, their push towards the oil fields hadn't worked out. They hadn't got the oil supply to, to fund what was a very oil-intensive war. Um, and the idea was to hopefully remove that threat on, the, on their western border by splitting the Allies, British and American, in half. Dwight D. Eisenhower was the um, supreme commander of the Allied forces and Hitler, obviously, of the German forces. But my favourite commander of this whole battle is Brigadier General Anthony McAuliffe of the 101st Airborne, and you'll see why later. So using the cold and the bad weather in their favour, the Germans attacked initially with an artillery barrage, as most of these things often started. Um, this was made super effective by the fact that the shells were landing by trees that were sort of completely frozen. It was so cold. 
and the, the trees were shattering, they were splintering, and they were just firing all over the place. Uh, the cold weather also meant that the Allied air forces, um, which were normally so, uh, so imposing and so overpowering, uh, weren't in the air. It was too cold. The weather was just, uh, it was just stopping them. Um, so they were grounded, which meant their attack was sort of unopposed in the air uh, and allowed the 5th Panzer Army to push forward uh, and effectively break the, uh, the front of the Allied line. Yeah, I just need to add something in here, Sam. This is one of the most interesting things about the whole, uh, about the whole sort of engagement, actually. But the Germans landed soldiers slash spies dressed as American military police behind the Allied lines. They switched signposts around, caused traffic jams. They spread misinformation. And they, they were very well trained. They spoke excellent English. They were all up to date with their sort of appropriate slang but once this was found out all allied units were suspicious of each other which slowed reinforcements communications and supplies by this i mean that um at every checkpoint units were interrogated by other units just to make sure that they knew that they were uh, american they were asked questions that it was thought that americans would know like um uh, stuff to do with baseball and who Mickey who and who Mickey Mouse's girlfriend was? Well, that's important information. So there were early early successes for the Germans in the north. They uh, they pushed deep into the Allied line, but never really any further than the forest. Um, they were stalled in the north actually by the 99th Infantry Division. Um, 99th were outnumbered five to one, uh, but still managed to inflict casualties uh, a ratio of about 18 to one, which is astonishing really. Um, but just based on, on sheer weight of numbers, they were pushed back. They got back to uh, the Elsenborne Ridge, um, where they were able to dig in, and uh, the Germans weren't really able to dislodge them. Um, Eisenhower stated that their efforts should probably be considered the most decisive action of the Ardennes campaign, or of what is often called the, uh, the Battle of the Bulge. In the centre, the German advance had been very successful. Uh, they, they pushed as far as the Meuse River. But they were stopped here by British forces at Dinan, and the American force ambushed the Germans, ambushed the Germans spearhead. Uh, they, they were able to knock out a significant chunk of the German armour, and on Christmas Eve, the German advance was halted. Yeah, on Christmas Day, uh, the weather eased, eased slightly, and the Allies were able to occupy the airspace again and use the um, overpowering... Uh, uh, air power that, that they had at this point in the war. Um, this is a massive swing in, in favour of the Allies. Uh, mo most of their their proper hold on um, on mainland Europe after D-Day had been based, or certainly uh, uh, thrown forward by phenomenal air power. Um, so now they were able to bomb depots. They could bomb advancing troops. They could shoot reinforcements. They could, you know, generally disrupt German positions. And probably more importantly at this point, they could drop supplies to their own front line. In the south, the Germans laid siege to the town of Bastogne. As the town was being surrounded, it was reinforced by, by the 101st Airborne Division, who were uh, known as the Screaming Eagles, probably my favourite American uh, army division. They've got a fascinating history starting during the Second World War. Um, but, the, but the town was also defended by an all African American artillery regiment who performed valiantly in the defence of the town. The situation looked very dire. However, when offered a surrender by, by the Germans, the defenders, led by Bacallif, who I mentioned earlier, replied with one word, nuts, which apparently, when relayed back to German commanders, was put, um, uh, not quite so politely, I think they translated it into something a bit more uh, expletive, something ruder. Um, but five days later, they were relieved by by General Patton's Third Army. Yeah, in the uh, in the new year, the Germans launched a big air raid on the Allied airfields, um, and they did cause quite a lot of damage. But they lost nearly three hundred aircraft. I think it was two hundred and seventy-seven or so um, aircraft doing this. Uh, a lot of the Allied fighters um, and the anti-aircraft guns were just really effective. Um, but also there was a lot of uh, friendly fire because of the, the sort of inexperienced pilots by this point in the Luftwaffe using. 
Um, weren't really sure what the offensive was as such, um, and therefore assumed that a plane was was an enemy, um, and were shooting all sorts of things they shouldn't be shooting. Since the battle ended with the pin, with the pincer attack from the north from General Montgomery and the British forces, and Patton's third army in, in the south who just relieved the Bastogne. This coincided with, with the increasing depletion of fuel for the German Panzer Corps. The Germans realizing if they did not fall back, they would be trapped. So therefore, pulled most of the forces out of the bulge. Yeah, one one of the things that um, people often forget about the idea of these these big sort of thrusts, bulging thrusts, we say, um, of of, <laughs> of, of armies <laughs> is that um, it's all well and good breaking a. Uh, um a defending army's lines but if you can't maintain the sort of column that you you force through then you just end up being surrounded by an army so um it's very much a, a, a it's often referred to as a snake's head as such in that you know the dangerous bit of the snake is the head and you can still kill a snake by cutting it in half so there's um it's making sure that the uh, the wedge that you force between various enemies stays a wedge and doesn't get cut off no, no one wants their snake cutting off. So the Allies lost uh, 90,000 uh, as casualties. Um, 733 armoured vehicles were destroyed uh, and about 1,000 aircraft lost. Um, the Germans lost between 65-ish and 90,000 uh, people as casualties, uh, about 550 armoured vehicles and around 800 aircraft. Um, it's important to mention that both sides committed pretty considerable atrocities on prisoners of war. Um, the Germans quite famously in this battle uh, at uh, Malmedy fired on about 90 US prisoners of war who were, who were lined up in a field. Um, the US in retaliation told their troops not to take any prisoners. Um, so you can only imagine what happened to the Germans when, uh, when the US started moving forward. Yes, it did matter. Um, it used up a lot of the German reserve. It meant the Germans were no longer able to counterattack again. Hitler knew that he only had one thrust left before he was done. Um, and it was very, like, it's admirable of him to acknowledge that. Like, some, so some men don't know when, <laughs> what the limit is if then when they're that close but yeah i mean um, what what what, okay, then, what some men would did. give to know when their last thrust was yeah i mean exactly but because of this one final thrust he had uh he had his last shake of the dice and he was a he was no no longer able to counterattack again church church lost stalin to increase pressure on the Eastern Front in, in, in retaliation to this offensive, and Stalin obliged. He moved the Vistula Adair offensive eight days forwards, yeah, from, from, from the 20th of January to, to the 12th, which, as you heard from the dates earlier, uh, overlaps with the Battle of the Bulge. And this Russian offensive was made more successful because of the amount of panzer groups that had been di diverted to the Ardent. Yeah, it, it was also quite um, important in, in ways beyond the, the Second World War. So it, it caused quite a lot of racial progression within the US Army. So up until the, the Battle of the Bulge, black soldiers were, were mostly re restricted to uh, support roles, to, to maintenance or, or to service positions, effectively. Um, but due to the need for, uh, for troops, uh, black soldiers were, were needed on the front lines and, and up to the Battle of Bulge, they were then included. Um, but Eisenhower, uh, after this, decided to integrate the, uh, the service for, for the first time. And, and this was a, an important step forward for, uh, in the US Army for, for equality, and they're still included to this day. Um, but that brings us to the end of a, uh, another battle breakdown. Um, Really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, do do like the video. It, it helps us out. Um, and do subscribe if you want to see see more videos like this. Go and check out our other videos. Um, and if there's a, a battle you'd like to see us do one of these for, just to, to talk you through, take take you through everything you need to know about it in ten minutes or so, um, stick a comment in the uh, in the comment sections below, and we'll uh, we'll try and um, we'll try and provide. Um, if you want to get in contact, uh, I'll put an email address 
down there. Um, or you can tweet us at History Pint, as it's also written down there. Um, but thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Yes.